to DXB Today. We are taking a look back at some of the big achievements on day two of the World Government Summit and, of course, discussing some of the topics that have been discussed down there today. Right, our next guest is a renowned tech innovator, investor uh, and social entrepreneur who specialises in digital transformation, uh, guiding businesses towards success. Please welcome to the show, uh, Leila Herschel. Leila, thanks so much indeed for being with us. Really kind of you for being uh, with Yeah, us. Uh, first, thank you so much for having me. It's my great pleasure and it's a topic that I love talking about so I can talk about it the whole day pretty much. Well, <laughs> 60 minutes, is that okay for you? I yeah. think that should be enough. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll go and grab a coffee. Yeah, there's a camera. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Listen, um, the reason we've asked you to come in is to, to talk about this is obviously with the World Government Summit ongoing at the moment, obviously it's a large topic uh, at the summit. I want to know, you know how, and you take a very international perspective yes. uh, on all things AI and the development of AI, the embracing, the, adopt, the adoption of AI around the world. Are some countries or are some regions doing it better than others? I think that's a very interesting question and I wouldn't say per se that they're doing better than others. I just think that there's a lot of changing, you know, geopolitical landscapes right now and they're greatly affecting, you know, the way that AI is being adopted and, uh, you know, globally and over, over around the world. And I think that there is a competition right now with, you know, being ahead uh, in AI, which is uh, significantly present like between the US and China. Mm -hmm. Notably, yeah, they're heavily investing in the development and in research uh, for AI. Uh, but I think that what's interesting is that being in the UAE right now is a very good place to be because uh, they have like a really unique and advantageous uh, position right now because they can uh, leverage their uh, collaboration and partnerships that they have with these two economic mm. and uh, technological superpowers. And the UAE has uh, been taking a very keen interest in being at the forefront of this AI revolution. For example, they launched and established the first, uh, the world's first artificial intelligence uh, university, the Mohammed bin Zayed Artificial Intelligence University. They're, they've also appointed the world's first uh, minister for artificial intelligence. And uh, they really established themselves as an international hub uh, to be at the forefront of these uh, technologies. I wanted to ask, maybe this can be a question for both of you. Um, how important is it for the countries uh, to ad uh, adopt AI, especially in like, let's say, ministries and government uh, offices everywhere? Uh, why is it something very important for them to adopt something like that? I think it goes straight to um, efficiency, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, uh, you know, adding to what Leila spoke about, um, I think we're seeing the rise of AI nationalism. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it in countries like Singapore, even in India, right? So even though we have the big anchors, there is this level of um, nationalism popping up with these sprouts all over. And as government entities, um, the efficiency around um, uh, how they are operating, are they having the best talent? Mm. Are they, so, you know, governments before, and you know, the UAE has been outstanding with this, governments yeah. before were the laggards. Now it is, how do I have outliers in the mm -hmm. forefront of being, you know, we are the ones who are driving innovation versus the startups and everyone else. You know, mm -hmm. government now wants to, wants to be, wants a piece, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So super yeah. important, high mm -hmm. priority. Mm -hmm. If I can add to that, mm -hmm. there is a recent McKinsey report uh, that said that AI and the applications of AI are set to add significant value to economies. Uh, it's expected around $150 billion. Wow. And that's like equivalent or a little, bo little bit more than 9% of the total uh, GDP of Gulf countries, which is an insane amount of impact on a single country to have, or on a group of single countries to have. And um, I think that's, I think you were talking about this previously on the show. Uh, right now, there's a staggering 33% of the population that are offline. Mm -hmm. That's around like 2.6 billion people that Same, don't have access. It? Yeah, there's a huge digital divide. And I think that it's important, you know, for governments and for countries to realize this. And I think that AI is the key and the solution to help reduce this digital divide and bring mm. access to more people. And this helps, you know, contribute to the GDP, help, help it grow, grow. And it's even expected that it's, 
can uh, almost double uh, global current uh, GDP growth rates. I think all of us, you know, and, and, and given the discussions that are ongoing at the moment, not just here, but out there at the World Government Summit, a lot of people agree that this, you know, this is the future. It's not going away. Artificial yeah. intelligence, here today, technology is going to play a larger role in our lives, be it our jobs, be it the efficiency, etc. What's and, and, and you've you've very clearly explained to us, you know, the adoption of that and how that's going to have benefits. What's the biggest challenge? to that adoption at the moment? Yeah, so I think that's reaching this technological utopia that we all wish <laughs> to reach. <laughs> it comes with a significant set, with a set of significant hurdles that we need to think about. And I think uh, one of the biggest ones, of course, is to establish really robust AI regulation frameworks. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about deep fakes, mm -hmm. but the impact, oh, yes. yeah, I mean, the impact and chaos that deepfakes sometimes in, uh, can ensue is uh, massive. For example, uh, deepfakes is when you use artificial intelligence to manipulate someone's face uh, to say or, you know, animate themselves doing an action that they've never done. Mm. And uh, this can be used to manipulate the media. It can be used to lead to political manipulations and this can really affect badly. Mm. So this has to be regulated 100%. And another point I wanted to make is that artificial intelligence systems are only as reliable as the data it's based on. So if that data is collected unethically or processed unethically, it's going to reflect as a bias within the AI systems. And this can greatly affect, for example, in credit scores, in job applications, like if the AI sorts through the jobs, uh, it can like discriminate against people of a certain race or yeah. of a certain gender. And we, uh, this can have such a big impact on the world that we uh, have to regulate this as much as possible and as ethically as possible. Well, well, as long as the humans regulate it, we've got to work out that. This fine, is it, it this know? is it. And you know, <laughs> you said something really poignant earlier, Tom, um, and you said it, Leila, you can talk for 60 minutes about this quite easily. <laughs> yeah. And and it's so fascinating, and we definitely have to talk about more about this off camera, which for sure. has been fascinating. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's a nice. great pleasure. Now, as the World Government Summit is happening and it's in full swing, we caught up with some of the thought leaders to find out their contributions to the event. Take a look. Mr. Edwards, thank you very much for joining us on DXB today. Now, you spoke about governments and the digital future and whether or not we are prepared. Are we? <laughs> I think some governments like the UAE and uh, others around the world have been taking a real strong look at AI and are leading the efforts. And I think many others aren't. And, uh, you know, my discussion today was about how, what's the steps to approach, you know, governments should take to approach using and deploying AI in government. Generative AI is all the rage, but there's a lot of issues with it. And so governments have to take a very careful, nuanced approach, step by step. And how is AI rewriting the rules of creativity? That's what you spoke about. So tell us a little bit about how it's doing that. Well, the first question is what is creativity? So creativity is coming up with things that didn't exist before, preferably something useful or interesting. And nowadays, AI can do that. It can come up with things that didn't exist before and it can interpolate different ideas or mix different ideas and come up with something. So you can now use AI as a creative aid. And this is different than the technology that we're used to. We're used to information age technologies like the internet, mobile phone, these are things where you make a copy of something and then you distribute that data. But that's not really much different than the printing press. What is new is that these technologies are creative. They're coming up with things that didn't exist before. And so we're entering the generative age where our machines are intelligent. Incredible. And how do you think this relates to governments across the world? And what do you think they can do with this kind of newfound technology? Well. Government is a very large topic. Everything from reducing toil, uh, making it easier to, say, set up permits to start a business. You could automate it, make it faster. Imagine, uh, depending on where you live, there are places where you have to spend a lot of effort paying your taxes. It's a day of your time. What if you could automate that? So getting rid of the toil. But what it also means, from a point of view of the citizens of every country, is today, you have two different types of workers. You have people who, who are individual contributors. They do the work. 
and then you have people who lead them. What I believe is going to happen is that AI is going to replace the individual contributors and turn every human being into a leader where you direct the AI to do what you're trying to do. As you can see, a lot is happening at the World Government Summit. But after this, we dive into a cutting edge social educational platform driven by AI with the CEO of Schoolhack. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>